Hi, this is Eric Keller for Ojoy. In this video, we're going to take a look at working with displacement maps when rendering in Octane standalone. And for this project, we'll be looking at how I rendered this uh, crystal version of the Octane logo and uh, all this detail, the cracks and all these little crevices that you see that are kind of bouncing around the light on the inside of the surface are all created using a displacement map. So let's take a look at the scene as I've set it up in Octane Standalone Edition. We'll zoom in here on our node tree and you can see I'm rendering with the PMC kernel. I have a texture environment which is just a black texture. It's blocking out all the default lighting in the scene. And what I'm going to do is let's create a second thin lens camera. So I'm going to copy this one and paste it. And let's hook it up here. That way I have a little backup camera so that it stores the position right here. So I'll move out off to the side. And let's make sure that post-processing is turned off for the moment just to speed things up. And finally, I'm going to I'm going to create a direct lighting kernel, which will also help to speed up while we're looking at the scene. So there we go. And now if I zoom out, we can see that the scene consists of uh, geometry that's been imported as OBJ files and I have kind of a white ground plane here which is providing some of these bounced reflections and then kind of like a little rocky surface here that has a dark glossy material applied to it. I have these little red crystals here kind of spilling out over the side and then of course I have my crystal logo and mostly what we're going to look at is how I created the detail on the logo using a displacement map. If we take a look at the lighting in the scene real quick, I just have I have a simple polygon sphere and a polygon plane, and they both have uh, emissive materials applied to them so that they're kind of providing sort of the lights in the scene. If I zoom out, you can see there's the sphere light, so it's kind of providing some of these bounce lights up here. And if we look around, you can see there is my area light. So I just created this geometry. In, in Maya and exported it and then brought it in here as OBJs and applied uh, emissive materials to them. So kind of a simple way to create lights. So the geometry itself as well as the displacement map for this logo was created in ZBrush. So let's take a look at the file in ZBrush and I'll show you how I set up the displacement export option so that it would render correctly in Octane Standalone. Now, in terms of exporting a displacement map, you can also do this with other digital sculpting programs such as Mudbox, or you can even paint uh, displacement maps directly in Photoshop. The main thing that I want to pay attention to is the settings that I used when I exported from ZBrush and the settings that I'm using on the displacement map when I bring it into uh, Octane and apply it to the surface. So here's what the object looks like in ZBrush 4R7. And you can see I've sculpted uh, scratches and cracks and other details and made the surface somewhat uneven so that it would reflect light in kind of an interesting crystal-like way. If we take a look at the geometry, it has several levels of subdivision. So the lowest subdivision level is only 7,200 points. Uh, but this actually has six levels of subdivision and at the highest level it's uh, 7 million points. So it's got a lot of detail in there. So the OBJ file that I'm using in my Octane standalone scene is this lowest subdivision level, the version that has 7,200 points. In order for a displacement map to work correctly when it is applied to a mesh, the mesh must have UV texture coordinates. So I've popped over to Maya really quickly just so you can take a look at what the UV coordinates for that crystal logo look like. Pretty simple UV texture coordinates overall, but they must be there in order for the displacement to actually work. So the easiest way to generate a displacement map in ZBrush is to use the Multimap Exporter plugin. It's found in the Z plugin palette. So if I open this up, you can see here it is, Multimap Exporter. And I'm just going to go over some of the more important settings. You can see it, it generates all types of different maps, but the only one I'm concerned about right now is displacement. So that's the only one I have turned on. I'm going to set my uh, size to 4096, so that means that the displacement map will be 4K or 4096 by 4096. So some of the other important settings to turn on are Flip V. This is because ZBrush 
uh, UV coordinates are flipped vertically versus most other programs. Also recalculate smooth UVs at the highest subdivision level. Now down here in the export options for the displacement map, so it's in this rollout right here, this is how you determine what type of displacement map you're going to create. If you want to create a 32-bit floating point um, displacement map, then you want to make sure that you have three channels, 32-bit, and EXR turned on. I'm also using adaptive, so this means that it adapts the displacement map based on the detail in the model and smooth UVs. And most importantly is this mid value right here. So with this mid value is set to 0.5, that means that in the displacement map itself, in the texture map, the gray values, the 0.5 values, or if you want to think of it as 50% gray, either way, that means that there's no displacement. So wherever there's gray in the map, the geometry is not going to be changed. Anything that's higher than 0.5 is going to be pushed outwards. The vertices of the model are going to be pushed outwards. And anything that's lower than 0.5 is going to be pushed inwards. So that these cracks that are going into the surface, those would be darker or lower than 0.5 or lower than 50% gray. These parts that kind of stick out a little bit, those would be the lighter parts of the model that uh, are higher than 0.5. Now, if I set this mid value to zero, then that means that negative values or values that are below black are going to push the vertices of the model in when it's rendered with octane. And positive values, values that are above zero, are going to push the surface out. And as you can see from this little tool tip here, um, using a mid value of zero works best when you're rendering 32-bit uh, EXRs. There are advantages and disadvantages to 32-bit EXRs versus 16-bit TIFFs. 32-bit EXRs tend to be more accurate. They have more uh, information contained in the file, so you get more of an accurate displacement. However, they also take up more space, texture space, because it's a bigger file. Um, you might find that a 16-bit uh, TIFF with a mid-value of 0.5 works just fine for your scene. The reason I'm making such a big point of this is that this setting is an important one to keep in mind when you're rendering the displacement map in Octane, because in the Octane displacement node, you also have an opportunity set to set the mid-value. And you want to make sure that the mid-value that you set in Octane matches the mid-value that you use in uh, ZBrush. If you turn off three channels, 32-bit and EXR, then what's going to happen is ZBrush is going to make a 16-bit grayscale displacement map. So that's what I'm going to do for this particular map. I'm going to leave this at 0.5 so that we have 50% gray, and I'm going to turn off three channels, 32-bit and EXR. Um, so once you've chosen your options, you basically press the Create All Maps button, find a location on your hard drive to save the um, file. It'll save it out as a Photoshop file, and uh, I usually open it up in Photoshop and then convert it into a TIFF uh, when I'm rendering it with uh, 3D Studio Max. But um, all you need to do is press save and it will create the map. So ZBrush takes a few minutes to generate the displacement map, but here is the result in Photoshop. And you can see it's a grayscale map. All the gray color corresponds to the areas on the surface that will not be displaced. These dark lines are the cracks in the surface that push inwards, and the lighter areas are the parts of the surface that push outwards. The advantage of creating a displacement map with a mid value of 0.5 is that you can open it up in Photoshop and actually paint additional details if you wanted to on top of this displacement map. In fact, it's kind of an old school way. You could paint the entire displacement map in Photoshop if you didn't have access to ZBrush. Uh, it just requires getting uh, a screenshot of the UVs so you have a guide so you know exactly how to paint uh, on the surface or where to paint the cracks on the surface. That's a little bit less intuitive, but it will work. So if we take a look at the mode here, we can see that it is indeed a 16-bit uh, image. So I'm going to save this out as a TIFF. And this 16-bit TIFF file that I'm saving out is what we'll be using within Octane Standalone to displace the surface. So here we are back in Octane Standalone. You can see that the uh, Crystal logo has these cracks and crevices in it. It's all created with the displacement map. Uh, but let's go through the process of bringing in the displacement map so you can see how it's done. And I'm going to create a glossy material and apply it to the surface just so it's easier to see the details than it is on this specular material. So what I'll do is let's find our geometry here. It's the Octane Crystal logo right here. 
and right now we have the specular material applied to it. So I'm going to right click over here under materials and choose glossy and I'm going to hook this into our crystal logo and turn off the pause button. And you can see now we have the surface with that bright glossy material applied. So you can see that there are some dents and dings in the surface, but you also notice how low res the uh, surface is in terms of the polygon count. And this is before I've actually applied the displacement map to it. So this is what it looks like when it's exported from uh, ZBrush and brought into Octane. So one thing you definitely want to make sure that you do is subdivide the surface so that when you apply the displacement map there's enough geometry to support the detail in the uh, in the displacement map. So to do that I'm going to make sure I have my object selected here and I'll go up to the node inspector and click on this wrench icon and take a look at the settings here. So Right now we have, so what I'm looking for is a subdivision level, and this is set to 2, which should be pretty good, uh, but we can set it higher if we need to. Um, think of it this way, each subdivision level is four times the number of polygons as the previous subdivision level. So at subdivision level 0, this would be our 7200 polygon surface. At subdivision level 1, multiply that by 4. At subdivision level 2, multiply it by 4 again, and you can see it goes up geometrically. So uh, we don't want to go overboard with the amount of geometry in the surface. So I think a level of two should work uh, just fine. You can also experiment with different subdivision schemes and see how it looks on your surface. I'm going to stick to the default Catmull Clark, but I am going to set the subdivision sharp. But I am going to set the subdivision sharpness up to ten because I want the displacement to have kind of like hard edges on the surface. I've noticed that if I have this set too low, like the default setting of 1, the surface can look kind of puffy and soft, which is not the look that I'm which is not the look I'm going for. So the main thing is to set this to 2. So that's good. And now what I can do is I can go to the glossy material and uh, I can either select the glossy material and uh, add the displacement here or I can do it in the node graph. I'm going to make everything nice and clear and use the node graph. So I'm going to right click in here and under uh, displacements and then choose displacements, displacement to create a node and I'll hook this into the glossy material. At the moment it's not doing much because we need a texture map in order to actually apply the displacement we need a texture map in order to actually provide the details for the displacement map. So I'm going to right click again and I'm going to choose uh, textures and I want grayscale image. And then I can choose the texture map that I exported from ZBrush and connect it to my displacement map. Again, we don't see much of a change because now we need to go into the displacement node and adjust some settings. So select the displacement node. So select the displacement node, and I want to set the mid level to 0.5. That matches the setting that I used when I exported the displacement map from ZBrush. And again, if you're using another program such as Mudbox, you want to pay attention to in the displacement export settings that mid value, and uh, make sure that it's consistent with what you set in Octane. So let's set this to 0.5. I want to set the level of detail to match the resolution of the texture and that in this case is 4096 by 4096 and then most importantly I want to set the height of the displacement and this uh, usually takes a little bit of experimentation. If I set this up to say a level of 1 and it starts to render we can see a little bit of those details. Some of those scratches are starting to appear in the surface. I take my glossy material and let's lower the diffuse value. It's a little bit easier to see what's going on and maybe increase the roughness a little bit. So now you can see that we are getting some of that displacement. So um, let's go to that to the displacement node and increase the uh, and increase the height a little bit more. Let's set this up to a level of two. And generally, you just want to kind of creep it up until you start to see some distortion in the surface that is not what you want. So, for example, 
if I set this height level to 10, you can see that the surface is really getting kind of mangled, especially along the edges here. So we want to make sure that that's not happening. So we can sort of walk back our height value until we find a setting that works pretty well. It's still a little bit too high. So let's set this to two. And that works pretty well. And that's basically how you can kind of determine the displacement settings on your surface. And again, if we take a look at the settings for the surface itself, so let's, let's So let's select the surface and open up this monkey wrench icon and let's see what happens if I increase this subdivision level to say four. It's going to take a while to load the geometry of course. So that's with more subdivision levels and then we can also try adjusting that uh, subdivision sharpness. So I set this down to one. You can see it's a little bit softer. So we can play with those values until we get a displacement that looks appropriate. And of course it's going to look a bit different when I reapply the specular material to the uh, surface. So let's do that. I'm going to bring my surface over here, or my mesh rather, and here's my specular material. It already has its own displacement node with very similar settings to this one. So I'll just hook it into the mesh. and then let it render. And then I'll hook up my PMC render kernel so you get those nice refractions, more realistic refractions I should say. And I can continue to adjust the lighting and the shaders in the scene until I get the look that I'm looking for. But that's the basics of working with displacement in Octane Standalone. Uh, this file will be made available for you to work with within Octane Standalone. I'll save it out as an Orbix file and you can take a look at how I've set up the shaders in the scene.